Okay, L up here, B culture. Let's talk a little bit about Studio One. There are some things in Studio One that I feel that will make it stronger. I make videos like these all the time, so that's why you should be subscribed first of all and hit the thumbs up on that, on that, on on this video here. I really do appreciate that. It helps grow the channel. There are also affiliate links in the description if you care to click those links and check out some sales and deals and things like that. I appreciate it. Anyway, so let's get back to it. So I have about nine on my list right now that I think. Do you guys remember when we first found out about Fender purchasing personas? We we're all furious. I like to say that I, that feeling has went out the window. I do like what Fender is doing. It seems like Fender is allowing things to continue from where they left off or perhaps some things that was already in the pipeline but just didn't have the budget in there. The budget is there. So things are happening. Hopefully. Personas don't give me all of the updates on what's going on, so I can't really tell y'all, but I can make videos and hope that they reach the people who makes the decisions to go ahead and say, you know, Ella is correct. Yes, we like this idea. We just, just go ahead and implement that. And they do watch. They watch the channel and they watch what you guys are saying in the videos. I mean, in the comment section. So... This is probably be a good video to make your claim and what you feel like should be happening. So I'm going to state my nine that I feel like is most important. Now, this is just nine. This is, this is, I have a bigger list, but, some, you know, just give you nine because the video will be super long. But I, I, do, I do feel like Studio One is where it is. Like, it, it's where it needs to be. Like, I feel like Studio One is good in terms of like the current feature sets. I think every, we good. We, we have a good, we got good solid features in here, but there are some, there are some, just, just some things that I, I can't let pass. Number one being the stability. Now there are some people who feel differently about that and that's great. If you feel like Studio One is stable, on your system that's probably because you're not using third-party plugins i'm sorry i'm just gonna say it. you're not using third-party plugins you're not making music because making music requires to use third-party plugins because studio one doesn't have much instruments in there so a lot of us are using third-party plugins that requires us to use midi and it's, it's a third party being you know a part of the process and that don't all the time make things stable. And needless to say, there, there was a couple of times Studio One own stuff, their own, you know, my tie has crashed Studio One. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. The Pro EQ has crashed Studio One one time. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I can't lie to you. So, I mean, even the thought about, you know, third party, um, yeah. Don't don't even bring that up, because I've I've had people say some stuff, but the reason why we use third party plugins and you know if virtual instruments and effects is because they're much cooler than Studio One stock stuff. Like the Montai stuff is is limited. Making beats to, to compete with stuff on the radio, we can't rely on Montai. Come on now, really seriously, you know. My ties and not everything. So we got to use other things like pigments or stuff from native instruments or, you know, just other places where sounds are more modern and sound cooler. Arteria is another one. And so plugins, you know, it was not that long ago that the Pro EQ just got dynamic function on there, right? Come on now. Ozotope stuff have been doing that forever. So, you know, there you go. There you have it. We still don't have things like, um, what is it, de or do we? Okay, never mind. I think we do have de It's been so long that we didn't have de that I still, in my mind, is still printed that we don't have it. But um, the advanced sampler, 
the advanced sampler that's what we need inside of studio one we still have the most basic sampler ever personas i wonder we're going to update that if y'all working on it that's great but currently the, the there is no advanced sampler and what i mean by advanced sampler i mean things that we can do in able to live that's probably the best way i could put that and speaking of able to live able to live has one of the best sampler engines and what it does and the features and the, you know like the creativity that you can come up with using that sampler on its own is bar none right then we have an advanced sampler in bitwig bitwig has a pretty good decent sampler i i, I still feel like able to live is 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 better it's a better sampler than what bitwig has but bitwig still has advanced features that we don't have in student one cubase cubase went to cubase 13 and they are only getting better their sampler is pretty cool not to mention going back to ableton live ableton just released to 12 right um as of the date of the video ableton may not be out yet this in public beta but 12 was announced and Again, sampler is amazing. Logic has an advanced sampler. The things that you can do in there is crazy. Now, when I say advanced sampler, it would be nice that the sampler or sample one is Studio One's version of sample sampler, right? So let's take that one. If we can get that sampler to join impact somehow maybe those two impact and sample one can join forces you know this is just a, a possibility where when we're using the sampler or impact for instance impact the different paths that we have it would be cool if you click on the pad right click whatever there's something that opens it up to an advanced sample. Maybe it can connect to the sample one where you can open up impact and to do the advancements, kind of like a container, like Bitwig, the concept of Bitwig, where when you use the drum rack or even Ableton, it's always opening up the sampler and we can go in and do real advanced stuff. And I'm not talking about the basic stuff that we have now. I'm talking about some real, like if we want to chop in that sample and do stuff and like change the engine, like we need more engines, more sample engines, meaning like more, just a drain engine. We need a, a warp engine, like changing the speed of a sample within that pad like stuff like that we can't do any of those advanced type stuff in the current state we need dc do you know what dc mean dc is what's usually found in samplers it prevents from clicks and pops say i chop a sample in the middle of a sample because i'm chopping in the middle of the sample a lot of times there is no zero crossing which introduced clicks and pops like people know when I chopped it right there. Like there needs to be something. Machine does it. Machine has a DC function where when you activate that button, it just kind of takes away that the click. It fixes that problem, right? That's the type of stuff we need. I say for some, just look at Ableton. That's what I just say. Just look at Ableton, mimic them, and you can kind of get where I'm going with that when it comes to sampler the next one is advanced yeah I, I said advanced drum machine so on my list i have advanced sampler and then number two is advanced drum machine so those two go together so drum machine working with samples we need we just need a, a total either redesign or just a fresh one I don't know what approach I want to take with that. A fresh new sampler. I I don't know. How y'all want to do that? Number three, redesign 
the media effects, the note effects. The note effects that we currently have is old. It has never been touched. Yeah. What's going on? I don't know. We need we need that to be updated. We just need better note effects. Again, I won't just rely on Ableton Live because their effects better yet, Bitwig does it better. So I'm about to go to Big Wig route on this one. Big Wig's way of note effects is so superior to me in my head because you could take a note effect and put it in front or just put it on the same track, I think. And it works. It is pretty dope. I think inside of Ableton, it has to be in a certain position. I think in Ableton, it has to be in front or some some weird like that. Anyway, the fact that you can do that um, and the amount of stuff we can do, like the arpeggiator for one. The arpeggiator is so basic. It's, I don't know. It's just so basic. It's just, like if we talk in MIDI notes and we talk in our page eight, right? The only thing we have now is how the notes can go up according to the resolution, you know, eighth notes, 16 notes, 30, 32, right? It goes up. Then it's one that comes down. Then there's one that I think it goes up and down. And then we can set, we, we can set the octaves, the range, you know, one octave, two octave, you know, how far up you want your arpeggiation to go. And then I think there was a chord one. For arpeggiation. I don't know who used chord, but anyway, it's there. Um, yeah, it's there. And I think that's about it. I think we have a, a randomizer, or maybe that's somewhere else, but there's no innovation there. I'll say Reason Studio has a arpeggiator. I think they do it best, to me, in my opinion, because it's it it's doing stuff, it's crazy. It's doing crazy things. Like you could set the note or something like that. And then it does these really cool things. But I'm not going to even go that route. There's a lot of plugins that that are being made that can do stuff like this. But you say, let's stay within Studio One, like trying to make Studio One the doll that we just use for everything. Well, um, updating note effects will be a real great thing I would appreciate that and I could go down the line with the different note effects but I just there it's boring we got the quarter they call it the quarter maybe we could change the name because this kind of sounds old quarter what is the quarter there's there's one called the, the scaler that's by plug-in boutique right that thing is so in terms of Note effects and things we could do with chords, progression, stuff like that. I think maybe that can be visited and we can get something similar to that. That would be amazing. To, you know, just things that a dog can do natively. I think stuff like that will help the the writer, the music producer. We already got lyrics in here, you know, you could write your lyrics, but like, you know what I'm saying? And I, I brought that up because it is saying that, that hey, this doll can write. We want you to use this doll to be able to write your song. Well, can we get something to help us create chords and come up with unique chords? Like maybe if I create a chord, maybe something that can give a suggestion. Like, okay. You know what? Logic is not logic. Ableton Live 12 is doing that now, I think. I think. I don't know. I say personas. Look at just just look at Ableton Live right now. Twelve like that thing is. Not a lot of people are happy about what's going on in um, Ableton Live. I'm excited about it. I think it's really cool what they're doing from a creative creative perspective. That's just my opinion. Anyway, my number four here is uh, Recode MIDI Input by MIDI Hardware Devices. And when I say that. What I'm saying is the MIDI input, the coding for it right now is not where it should be. It's, it's unstable. 
um, I don't know how to explain it to people who don't experience that because the usual response for people like that that has no clue what I'm talking about, they usually say, well, change your buffer size, make it 254 or something like some something weird like that. Is it 254, 226, 220? Anyway, people's usual response is to decrease your buffer size. That doesn't work for people like me that has a bunch of instruments already in the project. I need that buffer or the block size to to cater towards the instruments that are currently played. Virtual instruments, because I'm using third. Anyway. I don't have the luxury of decreasing my buffer size when I need the buffer size to, to handle the other things that's going on in the project. So we just need a better code for MIDI. If if we can get that, to, just take a look at it, at it, personas. Like uh, maybe maybe some type of give, you know, loosen it up. Um, it's a little bit different when you're creating in Ableton Live. Like I say, I bring Ableton Live up so many times because I admire the stability or like the the design, like the way it handled things in terms of workflow. Machine is another one. Machine, when you insert notes in there, it captures the notes as we press from the hardware. So if I'm creating chords or beat patterns or whatever, when you do it in those programs, it captures the notes close to where we want it to be. So when we hit quantize, it works. They say, well, why don't you activate the input quantize in Studio One? Because you can still do that. That's not the case. Because even input quantize, because if, if you're like a millisecond off of the beat, the way you want it, Studio One is going to take it somewhere else. Totally, yeah, anyway. I'm sure there's going to be some people in the description area that's going to agree with me. And it's like, they've been agreeing with me for so long because I made a video like this before talking about that very thing. But if you don't have what I have on my system, you know, and it, it don't even matter if it's like the processing power in your computer. It's just what I'm able to do on other dolls that are on my computer versus studio one. It's like night and day. So it's not really a processing or computing power. It's what's, it's the code inside of Studio One. And I'm talking about MIDI. It's what the, whatever the MIDI code is for how it handles inputting our MIDI notes inside the program that needs to be revisited. For some GOC. You will see shortly in the comments. You, you, if you start reading the comments, you will see. It's just going to be people going to, yeah. Um, redesigning the browser. Can we get a new browser or advanced browser? Can can we get that updated, please? Uh, it's it's old. It's it's not doing what we want. At least not for me. If you think about it, we spend a lot of times. We spend a lot of our time in the browser system, which is one of the things that I love about what Native Native Instruments did with their contact, right? If we look at contact and what they did to the browser, contact is one, their complete control, which is almost the same thing. That same setup lives in Massive. Kind of the same concept in terms of like the look, the look of it, I guess. But the browsing system in that is dope. I'm always going to glorify Bitwig browser because I think it's dope. Bitwig browser is it's like one of the best browsers I've ever I have dealt with. It, it is so user and it's smart. Like if I'm on a instrument track. And I click the plus sign on the instrument track, depending on where I click the plus sign in terms of browser, the browser knows that there's already an instrument on here. So we're going to look for effects. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And it just like how it opens up is just really useful. Like the, the information in Studio One currently, there's just one browser in one section and that one section only. So if you're not even in that browser 
you could be somewhere totally different in your screen, like in the MIDI, the piano roll, blah, 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 blah. But if you want to get to the browser, you have to go to that side. You have to go to the browser, come out of everything and go to the browser. And it lives in this boring area. I don't really have a preference on location where the browser is. Ableton Live is on the left hand side. You know, you know, it's not big of a deal but for me. As a matter of fact, shout out to Ableton Live for enhancing their browser. Because their tagging system is is kind of cool. Like the way that they're doing things. We need a new browser. I said it a few times in my videos. With the Just a browser that just makes better sense. Since we in there a lot, you know. Just, it just looks like dinosaurs right now. Like when you want to go and look for files, you know, on your hard drive and things like that. I mean, it's just what you got to do to get to those when you type stuff is stuff don't comes up all the time the current tagging system needs to be updated is to me is whack i don't like it you know if we can get that redesigned I, that would be that would be pretty dope my number six is recoding the stability of studio one in terms of how it handles the program or handle third party I, I, again, going back to Bitwig, Bitwig has something different going on in their platform. I think it's called Sandbox. And with that technology, that means your plugins, when it crash, it crashes the Sandbox. It crashes the plugin, right? It don't crash Bitwig. Bitwig is still operational. It works as normal. And in Bitwig, all I got to do is hit the reload, reload plugin. And that's just on that track within that device area in that sandbox. That's how Bitwig is set up. In Studio One, if a plugin crash or potential crash, it shuts down Studio One altogether. Period. I think it's good to know what crashed Studio One. So they did put something in place where it helped us find out the problem just don't load that plugin like you can actually load up studio one without the plugins that's their solution but um sometimes there's like a, a glitch that happens is what i found out ever since i started using bitwig when a plugin don't work as it should like it crashed when I re reload the plugin, it works. You know what I mean? So, you know, a lot a lot of times your your plugins go outdated and it causes problem, which is what I know. Some people say, well, just update your, your plugins. I have a, plug, a bunch of plugins on my system, so, you know, trying to update everything when you're in the middle of the project. Nah, man. Like, that just... If if a plugin is faulty, I like how Bitwig does it. It just crashed the plugin, and, and if the plugin is not working, and I've reloaded the plugin like a few times, and it was like, when the plugin is not working, it's just not working. Great. But Bitwig was still going. It was still running, playing the song and everything, and I could stop and rewind, you know, adjust something, no problem. I'm just dealing with this plugin right now. At that point is when I could decide, you know, I'm just using a different plugin. No problem. And be with stuff. You know what I mean? Like, can we get something like that in Studio One? That would be that would be dope. That that will put that will probably fix the stability of Studio One. Again, if you're not experiencing these, great, because you're probably mixing a project and you're dealing with nothing but waves and you're using stock plugins. And that's great. You know, you have nothing to worry about. All right, my, my, my number seven on this list is a mobile app for beat makers. We already have a remote app that we use. I think there's another app called Capture for audio. But can we get something for beat makers? When I think about it, there are beat making 
possibilities with every other doll other than Studio One. Able to Live has something Cubase. It's like they have like this little bitty app. It's called Cubases, I believe. It's like a a app version of the doll. It's like a full doll, bro. Like, whoa, you know, stuff you could do on there. It's like, come on. That's crazy. Reason has something for beat making that talks to their program. Logic Pro all day. GarageBand on on a mobile. GarageBand is an actual full-blown miniature app that comes free on all Mac computers. But they also have GarageBand on the phone. And and recently, now, it would, uh, uh, Logic is on mobile phones now, it's, I think. It's got, but they making you pay for it. What? What? What the heck? What is going on these days? Everybody's just trying to get your money. But uh, yeah, the fact is that everybody else has a mobile way of allowing us creators to continue to be creative. But Studio One does not. We don't have anything that we could be creative with, which is a bummer. It's crazy. All right, anyway. Number eight. Clip launch, maybe. Eh. I mean, wouldn't that be obvious, right? If Studio One was to put some type of clip launching. They kind of started doing it. You know? If if you guys play with the Ranger blocks, where you can, you know, it's not the markers, you know. It's a range. It's like those arranged blocks at the top. So when you double click on those, it takes you to the start of that section. It's kind of, it's, 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 it's like a hint to me, like, oh, we're about to start doing clip launching. Hmm. I don't know. That might be far-fetched. I don't know. But it, w- it would be cool. It, w- it would be cool. I-, I feel like clip launch is a a method. It is definitely a method I enjoy using in Able to Live and Bitwig for when I'm creating beats. It's just a way of creating something real fast, real quick, just quick four bar, quick eight bar, whatever you set it to. A quick way to just get something going, boom, 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 boom. And then you can create variations of it and before you know you can create a whole song and you know right now we're in linear mode so what we got to do is set a loop between that section and let that loop until we want to deal with another loop and blah blah you know I mean that's that's all right but I just think clip launch you know clip the clip base workflow it's not for everybody either it's only it'll only be for those who prefer to work that way I think it's cool. So if you do that, that means you got to, to you got to introduce the devices, like the model of devices, like Ableton, like the way we can see stuff at the bottom. You know, just how the plugins works. It's kind of cool. I mean, Logic always also is doing something similar to that. Anyway, I digress. My number nine, and I probably. There's probably some things on my list that could have made this number 10 or 20. <laughs> I did kind of say a lot of things, but my number nine on my list is AI. We all know that AI is here. AI is here. AI, artificial intelligence, is here. And I think it will be a great tool to help us create stuff. Ableton 12 is doing that. They have some type of AI technology in their doll and the way that it's being used in that doll, I think it's kind of dope. It's kind of cool. The AI is not here to create music for us, but it's a tool that help us create music. It helps spits out things in a in a intelligent way. You know, I just think it would be cool like to help us create chords, you know, that will be the part where I mentioned intelligent chord suggestion, you know, when they finally update the note effects, like, or it may not be a note effect, it just just might be a a feature in Studio One, 
you know, chords, creating chords, and then have AI technology behind it where it listens to the chords and they say, hey, you can go here or you can go here. And I make a decision. Like, oh, okay. I never, never thought I, yeah, I didn't think to go there, but it sounds good. Especially for people like me that's trying to be different, want to do something the opposite to what everybody else thinks, like give me something that, that makes sense, but it don't make sense. You know what I mean? Maybe there could be a way to just crank up the sensitivity level, you know? Like give me standard, standard, you know, simple, simple in advance, right? Hey, see, there you go. So I'm, I'm being creative right now. I'm giving y'all ideas. Maybe there could be a simple in advance mode, you know, for this, where the AI will say, hey, he, here's a typical, it's a typical next progression that you can take your song to. And then in advance mode, it gives us other opportunities that will be, it, it's like, it sounds good, but it's different. Like, whoa, I like that. You know, just built on intelligence. Like it's listening and it's knowing what's going on. You know, I think that'd be cool. That'd be cool. And that's all I have for you guys. Just nine. I only had it down on my list. It started out as five. I'm like, you know, I got some other stuff. But uh, if you guys have anything that you would like to add to this list or disagree to what I'm saying, or if you disagree, you know, you might be one like, you know what? You're just so greedy. We just came out with six. You know, I, I, I do think it's interesting how we always want more. Every time something comes out, we can think of more things to implement, you know. Say seven comes out, right? Studio One Seven comes out tomorrow. When seven comes out, we're going to always be like, well, <laughs> if this, if that, you know, we'll make this better if they do this. But, you know, well, a lot of things on my list has been things as I feel like has been ignored or maybe they are working on it. It's not focused right now, but in, later on the pipeline, I've, I've listed things on this list. I've mentioned stuff that just needs to happen because it hasn't. It hasn't. It just hasn't. And along with some, some, some other cool ideas that we don't have, you know, that could be very, very useful. You know, they did put out a survey. So, Personas put out a survey. Y'all remember that? To everybody asking, what is it that we see or we want to make Studio One that number one dog that we reach for every time? They did. Yes, indeed. They did. They sent it out. And I talked about it on the video. If y'all if y'all didn't get that email, I don't know what to tell you, but they did ask. So, here we go. And that was a while ago, so I don't know what's going on. Appreciate the surround sound. I think that's dope. I think that's something that we should have had. But, you know, we need we we need some some real stuff. Because everybody's not doing surround sound, you know what I mean? And I'm just that just being honest. You know, surround sound, it's good to have that for those people who are working on projects with surround. You know what I mean? Surround projects. Got people in here doing stuff in the surround just because we have it. Like, dude, stop. Like, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, some people some people do stuff like that. Like, you don't even need that for what you're doing. You don't even, you know, I digress. My name is Ella. And I have fun talking to you guys about all the things I think needs improved. He's improving inside of Studio One. B-Culture, lifestyle governed by art.